we are reaching the end of the year, and we always get at least one final batch at the end of November, beginning of December, and it seems like this time we got one of those very, very rare one manga batches, and what a manga it is. Because this week we have the return of one of my personal favorite jump mangaka of recent times, Daishi Tsutsui. Now, despite me saying recent mangaka, he's been around for a while. He debuted in Comic Blade in 2008, and he released a couple series there, including a bunch of Stains Gate spin-offs, uh, before moving on to Jump and having the Nisukoi spin-off, Magical Patissier Kosagi-chan in Jump Plus, and then finally having his weekly Shonen Jump debut, we never learn. Having ended in late 2020, I never really got a chance to talk about this manga on the channel, so indulge me a little bit here. Uh, we Never Learn is a manga that definitely comes with everything that a Nechi Harum comes with, and your enjoyment of it will really depend and be influenced by how much you enjoy or tolerate the genre. However, I think the character writing of Tatsui elevates We Never Learn to be one of the better ones of the genre. There's an effort here to not only make the main character uh, interesting and believably desired by the rest of the cast, but also to write girls that are not just trophy waifus that love the self insert character. And moving on to today's manga, Sitcraft Love is a Mystery, that's more or less what I expected to see, but Sitcraft is a different manga. To claim it to just be a rom-com is actually very unfair to it, so let's take a look. Now, as you may have guessed it from the cover and title alone, this manga is a rom-com parody of Sherlock Holmes, and if you don't know how that works, don't worry, because I didn't either. We follow the titular Sitcraft, the great detective who is fated to constantly be in the middle of crimes, and honestly, that was where the manga sold me right away. If you love things like mystery or detective novels, or even just things like, you know, Dead of Conan or Ace Attorney, you are well aware that these characters have this unbelievable luck to always be in the middle of murder mysteries. Well, this manga explains it as kind of a curse that befalls Sid's family line. He's zoomed to be a great detective not just because he has the skills, but because he is cursed to always have these crimes happen around him and he will just naturally solve them. This is not even something that he actively wants or likes, as we find out that he's actually really scared of corpses and blood and the only thing he wants is just to go on dates with a cute woman. Still, he's able to put an act and look cool and collected in the eyes of people around him when he's actually solving these cases. Most of the early parts of this chapter are to introduce Sid as a character, as well as to briefly introduce what are probably going to be the two potential love interests of the story. Now, I say potential because while they are clearly posed as such in the story, there's not really a romantic tension between them and Sid Craft, at least as of now. Now, the first one is its assistant, uh, Elio, which I'm just gonna spoil it, despite being portrayed as a guy, they revealed at the end of the chapter to be a woman. And the second one is the police inspector, which has the stupid, stupid name of Souffle Flamberry, which is kinda uh, his rival, kinda. The only other thing that you need to know before you jump into this chapter's main case is that it has the Lavina plot. Sid made a promise with a girl when he was younger that they'd both be great detectives and be together, but it's been so long that he actually doesn't remember the face of his first love. The Lavina plot. Now, I don't really like the execution of this plot point as of now, but we'll talk more about it at the end of synopsis. Moving on to the case, we start with Elio and Sid at the bar where he meets a really cute bartender that seems to be actually interested in him, after he realizes in a very, very cool manner that she's actually injured in her dominant arm. But before they are able to even flirt more, the inspector, which I'm not gonna repeat her name again, finds him and mentions that there's a body that has been found in a forest nearby and that Sid was requested to take care of the case. While the crime looks like a suicide at first because while well, the victim is holding the murder weapon and there's only one set of footprints on the place, a second blood stain away from the corpse shows that there's been another person involved in this case. After a bit of investigating, Sid returns to town where he meets with the bartender again and he just asks her point blank, are you the murderer? Which of course she reveals that she is. Now the plot twist is kind of obvious uh, just because she's the only other character that could possibly have done it. She's the only character that were introduced in this chapter that wasn't part of the main cast, so 
we, we didn't really had any other option. But what I really enjoy is his reasoning as to why. He realizes that she was involved with a victim and that they were lovers and that he tried to murder her but failed. And all these conclusions are made with ends that were actually in the chapter before. You know, of course, the obvious ones that there was a blood stain that wasn't from the victim and she was injured, but there's other things. For example, you can kind of see a line of dirt around her leg at times, and it turns out that that's a mud stain, and of course, the victim was found in a muddy place. The two characters can be found together in a photo of Elio that shows early on at the background, and while you can't really tell that they're like, lovers, they don't really look like lovers in that picture, they both have similar necklaces. The other things are not really that big, that it's not something that is pulled to the forefront when you're reading the chapter for the first time, so the plot twist still hits, but they are there, so if you are to read and look at all the details, you could potentially come up with the conclusion even before Sid does. And I think that's one of the greatest things of this manga, and the flaw of something like I Tell C, if you for example remember that one, where it was a type of manga where they didn't really give you all the tools to solve the crime yourself, and I think that's like a major part of the fun, that's the reason why I enjoy things like Ace Attorney, for example, is that you can solve the mystery on your own. For the most part, at least. With that solved, the manga wraps up, but not without revealing two other plot twists about the side cast to the readers, but not to Sid. The first one is that Ellie is a girl, and the second one is that the inspector is actually the promised girl in Ted before. And I think that sucks. Elio being a girl, I kinda got it anyways, because Tsui just draws women differently than he draws men. And that doesn't say that Elio couldn't just be like a feminine man or a trans man. But I just had the feeling that the most probable outcome from the Armangaka was just another woman to add to the mix. But my biggest problem is introducing the Lovina plot and just solve it right away. Because the way that the inspector talks about it and how it shows in the background, it really gives no margin of doubt that she is the girl. They show the exact same scene down to her character arc and her dialogue. Uh, so it's gonna be really hard to just not be her. And I think, you know, especially in a manga about solving mysteries, if you're gonna give me a mystery in chapter one, I wanna solve it. But that, honestly, that's really the only problem I have with the manga so far. I think the execution is great. There's not a lot of uh, rom-com elements in it so far, although I believe the manga will start to focus on it uh, as time moves on. But we're talking about someone who has written what is, in my opinion, the third or so best rom-com in Weekly Shonen Jump's history, only behind Blue Box and my personal favorite, Ichigo 100%. Uh, so I trust Tsutsui to actually write those elements well. In the meantime, the execution of it as a mystery manga is really good. I think the foundation is there. I'd like to have some more complex cases with more people involved, so I don't, you know, it's, it's not obvious. Uh, who the killer is right from the get-go, but I also understand that this was the first chapter and there was a lot of things to do within only 54 pages, so I understand that it wasn't really possible to cram all of that in. The art is great as per usual. I think Satui's art has evolved a lot during We Never Learn, and I'm sure there are some people who prefer the sharper design of early We Never Learn, but I really like his current art style. It's clean, it's bubbly, it's very adorable and pleasing to look at. He's not someone who excels at something like a double spreads, but he's someone who absolutely delivers when it comes to visual comedy, when it comes to readability in smaller panels, and especially, especially when it comes to character expressions, which if you watch some of my other videos uh, on this you know, uh, on the series, you know that I really care and I really like when a mangaka has really good character expressions. Because I think it's important to have that, you know, be able to connect with them in that way. And for someone who's still on the fence because, you know, this is an etchy mangaka and you don't really like reading etchy, you want to avoid etchy stuff, well, good news because I don't think this is actually gonna be an etchy manga. At least based on the first chapter, there's really nothing here. And we're talking about the mangaka who did We Never Learn, which has a bat scene squeezed in in the very first chapter just to make the quota. And there's been rumors for a while that Jump isn't accepting etchy content anymore in the magazine. And you know, I think that might be something cool to talk about in a future video, but honestly, it does seem more and more likely that that's the case with every coming year. So, will this manga survive? 
Um, I want it to, and I definitely think it has a chance. Uh, the main thing stopping it is that Shonen Jump currently already has two other rom-coms, and this is not Weekly Shonen Magazine. Jump normally does not have more than that. So, however, this is by a veteran who has done it before, and I can see them giving it a chance, and I definitely can see it being able to compete with uh, Imaten. Not really blue box, but at least Imaten when it comes to sales. But really, I believe all three of them can coexist just because they're all very different. Uh, blue box is a mix of 80s rom coms with you know more modern tropes turn, thrown into it. Uh, and Imaten is very much just a throwback to you know rom coms of like 10 to 15 years ago. And Sitchcraft is just something completely different. I think you can tell it's mainly a mystery manga. And fully pivot to that if you know if it's more adventurous to, to it. And I say pivot, but you know, right now most of the rom-com elements are really just the subtitle, and the fact that the main character really is more interested in romantic pursuit than solving mur murders, but it, it is not a defining characteristic of the manga right now. Maybe it's all cope just because I want Tutui to succeed again, but I do believe. It can survive and it has the quality to do so. Now all that is left is just to to wait and see. If you want to know my first thoughts on all the other jump series, please click on the playlist on the left. And if you want to know my first thoughts on all the upcoming series, please consider subscribing. And if you watch this over here, thank you very much. And I'll see you next video.